Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, my dear friends and fellow travelers. Welcome to Albion Bible Church here online on uh, on YouTube. It's so good to be with all of you once again. I pray that your week is going well and that uh, that uh, the Lord's blessing is upon you, and uh, that uh, you know if if there's and if there's anything that uh, that you need prayer for, anything that you'd like to celebrate, please remember our prayer list. Uh, just contact us. Uh, the the, uh, the email address is in the description box below. So if you need to contact us for any kind of prayer, anything you need uh, that you want to lift up to the Lord, uh, just just contact us and we'll add you to our list and uh, and we will pray with you and we'll pray for you. Okay? All right. That's excellent. Uh, let's go on to uh, our study, our, our, our uh, topic for today. Our message, and uh, we're going to look in the in Paul's letter to the Romans, and uh, we've we've been in the uh, the book of Romans before, and uh, I think recently. So, uh, but there's so much there's so much there's so many good things packed in here uh, that uh, Romans is definitely worthy of a, of extended study. So we're going to take a look at Romans chapter eight, and Romans chapter eight verses eighteen through. 25. Okay, and if you'd like to join me there in Romans 8, verses 20, 18 through 25, uh, 18 through 25. Um, if you want to, if you want to read along with me, you can pause the video and, and wait. Uh, uh, pause the video and, and go ahead and uh, uh, find it in your in your Bible or your Bible app. And then uh, once you press the uh, press play, we can we can read together. Then okay, so. Uh, all right, join me. Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 18. For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the anxious longing of the creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but also we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body for in hope we have been saved not, uh, but but hope is seen as not hope for who hopes for what he already sees but if we hope for what we do not see with perseverance we wait eagerly for it may almighty god bless us the reading of his holy word amen let us pray Dear Holy Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our Holy Spirit, Lord, we give you thanks and praise for all of the things that you have done for us. Lord, we thank you for your providence, dear Lord, and the way you've you have provided for us and sustained us throughout the years, and uh, and and has have been our aid and guide and and uh, master and Lord, uh, our living saving Lord all these years, and uh, no matter how long we've been on this earth, as long as we've been following you, Lord, we know that, dear Lord, that you. Uh, you provide for us, and so, Lord, we give you thanks for all those things, and and uh, and it's in knowing that, dear Lord, we can lift up our prayers to you. We can lift up our praises to you, and we can also, dear Lord, give you thanks for this glorious word, dear Lord, that we read every week, dear Lord, and we hopefully we read every day, uh, but uh, it, it is it is the love letter, dear Lord, your love letter to us your beloved children, so that we may know who you, who you are and and what kind of people you want us to become. We, you want us to become more and more like you. So, Lord, bless the reading of this word. Bless their study of the word. Bless our, 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 our analyzing and pondering of the word, uh, not just merely as an exercise just to, just to do it, but with the intention of being changed and transformed by this word. 
so that, Lord, we may be able to be well equipped to tell the world that does not know you yet about your good gospel, dear Lord, the good word, dear Lord, of your death, your saving death and your resurrection, and one day you're coming again. So, Lord, we give you thanks and praise for all of these things, for your word, for your providence, Lord, in all things. In your name we pray, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Think about the uh, the idea of suffering. Now, uh, I think a lot of people, when they think of suffering, they most people probably go to an idea of somebody in pain, you know, suffering through an illness, or maybe suffering through some kind of financial issues, or suffering uh, some sort of loss, loss of a loved one, or. Uh, or suffering the, 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 the pain and separation that comes from a, a relationship that breaks apart or a friendship that, that, uh, that, has, been, uh, that has been disrupted somehow by, by whatever it might be. Um, but when we look at um, when the Apostle Paul is talking about suffering in this context, now remember in this context in Romans here, in, the, in particular this passage, you know, the word pathema in, in the Greek word he uses here, it is not, he's not talking about the everyday life's, life struggles, griefs, the, the things that I I've, that I've listed off. He's not talking about those kind of sufferings. Uh, what Apostle Paul is talking about is a very specific type of suffering. The suffering that those who follow Christ endure. Suffering for the sake of Christ, for the sake of the faith. Okay, that's what he's talking about here. So when we when we when we read in this context, don't read into it sufferings as in things you're you're feeling physically because of, you know, a multitude of reasons, but a very specific reason. Suffering for the cause of Christ. The uh, the struggle to be more like him against sin. And against this sinful world, it's it's a lot like trying to go against the stream. You know, uh, it's it's much easier just uh, if you're in a boat and uh, uh, allow yourself to be taken and swept away by the current. But if you try to go up against the stream, it's going to be a real struggle. And uh, and that is uh, that's that's what we're called to be, and that's what we're called to do as followers of Christ. Uh, because the, the, the stream of the world is going one sinful direction and uh, we as believers are to, are to go against that, to go against the flow, go against the grain, go against every, everything that, that, uh, that the world would, would deem as you know, intuitive. We, we, we're going a counterintuitive direction. To live according to his commandments and not give in to the world. You know, we have salvation. You know, we do have salvation, but is not completely here yet until Jesus returns. And that's what Paul, that's one of the big things that Paul's trying to get at in this passage. And it's evidenced by the fact that believers still have to live with sinfulness and temptation to sin. You know, anyone who tells you they're, they're not tempted to, to sin and not, not tempted by sinfulness and not, not struggling with it, I'm, I'm afraid is is not uh, being forthright with you uh, because as long as we live on this earth we're going to constantly be you know be be tempted uh, you know Satan's gonna keep dangling that carrot and it's it's and it's gonna be a struggle for us to say no uh, because it's it's up to us to accept sinfulness and to, to give in to temptation or not and uh, even though we are we belong to Christ we have been saved by him um, it's still part. It's still a process. Uh, I like the, um, the the. There is a uh, there's a saying that I've heard from uh, from from people of the Orthodox faith, and uh, the idea that this this threefold description of salvation, you know, I am I am saved, I am being saved, and I will be saved. 
So we're, we're moving through, we're, we're moving between these, we're kind of in between these three and we're, we're hopefully growing more towards, you know, I, I'm being, I, I will be saved. I am following Christ. I'm becoming more like Christ. Okay. The Apostle Paul encourages us that in the, the present suffering in conforming to Christ in the midst of a wayward world, it does not compare with the end result. Paul's saying, look, the present sufferings you suffer because you're a follower of Christ and because you stick out like a sore thumb that you don't fit in. You don't, uh, you know, and uh, unfortunately for a lot of our brothers and sisters around the world who uh, who literally give up their lives for the faith. I mean, they understand this far better than those of us who live in the West. They, they understand this completely because they, they live with this day by day, you know, all the time. So they understand this. But Paul is giving a pep talk, and he's not just a pep talk, he's giving encouragement to uh, the believers. And here it turns, and it's the believers who are in Rome, you know, the seat of the empire, the seat of, uh, and also where persecution is taking place. Uh, those Christians who are, you know, hiding out and trying to be in secret, trying to maintain their faith without drawing too much attention to themselves. And Paul's like saying, look, the present things you have to go, you go through in order to conceal your, your, your faith and to, and to survive is nothing compared to, um, compared to what will be whenever Christ returns and whenever we are with, with Christ and whenever the fullness of his kingdom is revealed. He's telling us that in the end, it'll be worth it. It will be worth it, all the pain and suffering following him. Now, like I said, those of those of us who live in the West, we we really don't understand very much at all what it means to suffer for the faith. And I've I've had the opportunity, the the, the, the I've been honored to have the opportunity to talk to um, several of those, uh, you know, people from from other parts of the world who are believers, who are followers of Jesus Christ, and but who come from parts of the world that uh, their governments and their culture is very is very much against uh, the, the faith they're very much against Christ and very much against any who follow Christ and uh, and I've heard their stories and I've, I've sat with them and talked with them personally and and uh, and it just what it does is convicts me it convicts me in, in my and uh, and and to see where I'm complacent or where I I don't really I don't really do the things I should I don't take it as seriously as I should I don't practice it as as I should and uh, and and, it, and it's good to be convicted it's good to be reminded of of what we are to be doing as followers of Christ how we're we're to to be you know we're not to give in to the world and go along with the world because when I start examining myself, I see how much, how much I have personally incorporated the ways of the world in myself with, without realizing it. And it's only by examining myself and examining my heart, examining my thoughts and my mind and, and my actions and where, where, what I do and I, what I spend money on, what I, everything. It, it's, um, it opens my eyes and it convicts me, you know, you know, it convicts me as it should. Because uh, when I look at these 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 suffering uh, servants of Christ and see what they've gone through, you know they've they've fled there and they've they've come to the West uh, for to to flee uh, from the the persecution that they've they've experienced in their home countries, you know and to hear their stories, it's 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 very humbling as it should be, it makes me take the faith much more seriously and take Christ much more seriously and don't take him for granted don't take anything for granted you know remember eternity is forever and even creation itself eagerly waits the completion of salvation of believers in Jesus Christ um, now we know uh, and what Paul states here creation was unwillingly affected and God allowed it to be affected you know, God was the one who said, "Yeah, yeah, he he's the one who allowed creation to be affected right along, right along with uh, with humans." Um, 
now we're not talking about climate change or the results of pollution it's you know it's it's not because somebody drives a gasoline fueled car that creation groans it's because of sin of the sin of humanity it goes far deeper than that you know pollution is just that's just a, that's just a surface issue that lead, that points to a far deeper issue a far far deeper problem which is the sin of humanity you know but remember god allowed that god allowed that and uh, and i want to share with you maybe something that will help clear this up because i know that can be a real point of contention with with people uh, you know how could God allow that to happen? Well, well, consider this. This is from a, a and I, I felt that this scholar put it in much better words than I could ever have. So let me quote here: God made the whole creation, including mankind, subject to vanity because of man's disobedience to God's specific command. And we see this specific command in Genesis chapter two, right? Man did not believe God's threatened th- uh, God's threatened judgment of death. Okay, they didn't believe it because remember the, the the serpent came and you know they all you know trying to tempt them to eat the fruit and the serpent said, "Oh, surely, surely God's not going to kill. You. Surely God's not going to bring death to you. I mean, he 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 loves you. Why would he allow that to happen? So go ahead, eat the fruit." So humanity didn't believe God's threatening of of judgment of death as a consequence of disobedience. Had but. The thing of it is, had God not imposed this, if God had not kept his word, he would have proven himself untrue. He would have proven himself untrustworthy because he changed his mind, because he went back on his word. God subjugated man and his environment to vanity, or, or, or here, another word to this futility or aimlessness, okay, So if you're having trouble with the word vanity, think of futility or or aimlessness. Because God subjected man and his environment to this aimlessness, to this futility, and because God alone can give true meaning and lasting purpose to life, the autonomous man and the world of fallen humanity separated separated from God in death is left to define and give purpose to his existence, a task at which he has dismally failed, apart from God. And this is the part that's really that's really pivotal here. Apart from God, mankind has a meaningless existence. Apart from God, existence is meaningless. Okay. No amount of climate activist action or carbon credits or carbon tax is going to change the reality of sin of the sin effect on this planet. Okay, yeah, you are not going to save the planet, quote unquote. Okay, you're not you're not going to. All right, you're not God. God is the one who's in control of these things, and God is not going to allow anything to happen to the planet other than 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 what He ordains and what He what He allows. The only thing that will free this creation from the corruption of sin is the completion of salvation upon the children of God, upon which all of creation groans for. It's looking for that. It's 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 wants that. The ones who trust in Christ have come humbly before his cross, asking forgiveness of their sins and asking for salvation. Begging for it. The ones who cling to Christ and his teachings who trust in his grace, who identify with his suffering and follow him despite the sufferings and eagerly await his return, will experience the fullness of salvation. It all comes down to trust. Trust in Christ. Not losing focus on that trust, not losing focus on him. That he be first and foremost at the very, at the, at the center, at the at the source of your life from which all things in your life flow everything downstream is 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 is, must be influenced by christ at the source we can't have we can't have multiple sources we can't have things polluting the waters 
of the source of our life. If we have Christ, but we have other things, and these other things get in the way, it it severely it severely stunts us, and it it it's we we cannot grow into the people he wants us to grow into. Now he talks about the pain of childbirth. Uh, now, many people, a lot of women probably wouldn't like to hear this, but but childbirth is a pos is seen as a positive pain. Yes, yes, it's pain, and I I know and I, I've never gone through anything like that. Uh, but in comparison to pain, either from injury or illness, with childbirth, with pain of childbirth, there's an expectation, right? There's something going to come out of it. You know, there's a child going to be born, you know, and the 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 horrific pain and suffering that goes with with the the, the that process is once the child is here, it's over, and there's something good that has come out of it. So Paul Paul is talking about uh, you know, the, the this this expectation that comes with the suffering with suffering for Christ. It, like a child being born, there's expectation in this suffering for Christ, that it, it anticipates the completion of salvation, that there's something good going to come out on the other end of this. Okay, It anticipates the full realization of who the followers of Christ truly are. The, you know, so and and we believers, we also groan within ourselves, you know, you know, desiring that this completion come to pass soon. Even though you know we, we we are saved, but we're being saved, and we will be saved. We're, we're, it's, this is still part of the, the the road we're traveling, following Christ, and we groan within us that these things come to completion, just as creation itself groans that the completion is is done in us. And he talks about first fruits. You know, moving on from you know keeping keeping a train of thought going. You know, going from childbirth to the thought of first fruits, and uh, what first fruits are and what they what they've have been in the you know, at least at the time of Paul when he's talking about this was the first of a crop that that would ripen because there are, will always be plants that in in a field that will ripen first uh, before before the others. And farmers could a lot of times would 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 look at, would analyze those those first fruits those those plants that blossomed early, and they could extrapolate from that from that analysis of that fruit that this is probably how the rest of the field is going to be, okay. But it's not the complete harvest. It's only just the few plants that were early uh, early uh, producers. So. Believers have experienced the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, but not completely. You know, we still we still have not fully experienced what what is to come, whenever Christ is fully revealed and when he when he returns again and when we are uh, experience our salvation in its fullness when we are transformed into the people completely that He has always intended. See, we only have a taste of the goodness of the Lord right now. His grace, his providence, his sustenance. And the sufferings of this present age pale in comparison to the glory all who truly follow Christ will enjoy for eternity. And he talks about full adoption. You know, once again, keep, keep keeping in line, keeping that, that metaphor going. Uh, the full adoption of sons and daughters. That's, that's as yet to come. You know, we're, we, yes, we, we, we are adopted by Christ so through his death and his resurrection, by his shed blood, we're adopted into the kingdom of God. But we're, st we're still not fully there yet. We're not fully developed yet. And adoption means that we, through sin, you know, because we can extrapolate what that means. Well, why do we have to be adopted in? Well, it, it, the implication there is something happened to cut us off from God. Well, we know that was sin. Right, and it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. Thankfully, by faith in the suffering, saving work of Jesus upon the cross and his glorious resurrection, we have been adopted back into the family, the kingdom of God. 
you know, it, it, as long as we, as, as long as we trust in that and we come humbly before His cross and asking for His grace and asking for His salvation, you know, we we are adopted back in. But yet, this is not complete until Jesus returns, and creation eagerly awaits our adoption, for it will be restored. For for creation itself will be restored to what God had intended as a result. Redemption of the body is also part of this as well. It's not just our spirits, but our bodies as well. You know, Paul is not talking about some kind of uh, Greek dualist thought, you know, where the, the, the Greeks and the Romans thought that everything of the flesh was, was just irredeemable and and only the things of the spirit were were, were pure no uh, he's talking about that that the flesh and spirit both being restored both being redeemed and uh, as God had all God as God had intended from the very beginning so it's about the restoration of all things you know now with restoration, there comes a lot of work and change, and and uh, um, and and in our bodies included, the, the 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 whole of creation included. But at the at when that is all, when that work is done, after Jesus returns, it will be the way He intended it all along. And the hope means. You know, well, we know we, we eagerly wait for this with with hope, with hope, and hope is is intrinsically uh, linked to faith, right? Faith, hope, and love. But those things are are, are just linked together, and so we have to remember first of all, and we must always be rem reminded that salvation was not at attained. We did not attain salvation by good works, but by grace. Hope in the salvation is given to those who trust in Christ. We hope in that. And hope means that salvation is not completely here. But believers know and trust it will be completed when Christ returns. And we, we have faith, faith and hope and trust in that. You know, one does not hope for something that they already see. You know, so we have not yet already arrived. You know, you know, a wayward sailor does not hope for land that he has already sees on the horizon, right? I mean, there's, there's no need to hope anymore. You, if if a sailor sees land, well, there's land ho. You know, you hope for something that you do not yet see. The struggle, the suffering, is now to be more like Christ but always the anticipation that full redemption is coming and will be here. And it's trusting in that. Do you trust the Lord Jesus? Do you trust him that, uh, that his, his saving work upon the cross, even though it, it, it is complete, but, our, our, but the process of our salvation is, is, is not yet. I mean, we, we, we're saved, we're being saved, we will be saved, right? We're in that process. And, you know, whether experienced in heaven or if Jesus returns right now, um, the, today is the day of, of perseverance. Today is the day of salvation. And our Lord expects us to persevere, faithfully following him, no matter what suffering may come our way. Let's keep that in mind always. You know, the present suffering is not even worthy of comparison to what we will experience whenever the completion of the kingdom is here, when the completion of our salvation is here, and we are transformed into the people that he always intended us, and we will see him face to face. Let's try to keep that in mind. Keep trusting, keep hoping in Christ, who is your Savior and Redeemer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, your Holy Spirit, Lord, thank you so much, O oh Lord, for your grace, dear Lord, outpoured upon the cross of Calvary. Thank you for your saving work. But Lord, uh, help us, dear Lord, to, to, uh, to continue to keep walking towards you, to have that hope, dear Lord, that, uh, that, that, that unwavering trust in you, that knowing, dear Lord, that uh, that that work that was that was that was started will be completed in us. 
O Lord. Lord, we give you thanks and praise, dear Lord, for that, for that grace, dear Lord. And Lord, we know, dear Lord, it's 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 all because of you. And it's and you're the only reason why, dear Lord, we even have a we have a chance that we have that we have this assurance, dear Lord, that we if we truly are in you, then we 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 know, Lord, we will be able to endure to the end. Not because of not because of our, our strength or because of something within us, other than you, dear Lord, and your your redeeming spirit. And that's the only the only way, Lord, is through you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for this and for all things that you have done for us. In your name we pray, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, my dear friends, I'm going to ask you to uh, check out the description box below for the video from uh, to uh, for uh, for this week's featured video from one of the many wonderful, talented. Uh, people here on YouTube, and uh, we pray that, that, that you will just be blessed throughout the whole week. Remember to like and share and subscribe if you like what you hear, uh, so we can continue to spread the word of God together to those who do not know him yet. And now, my dear friends, may God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with your spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.